There's a long history of societies uh, being used as metaphors for organisms. Uh, it goes back uh, even beyond the 19th century uh, Englishman Herbert Spencer, uh, who compared society with a living organism with interdependent parts. A change in one part of the society causes changes in other parts, so that every part contributes to the stability and survival of the society as a whole. He made comments that, that uh, societies start small and they grow big, like organisms do. Uh, they increase in complexity as they get bigger. And the parts become mutually dependent upon each other. Also, society outlives its parts. Us, we're the parts. The society itself outlives us. Then he went on and he built uh, analogies to support his metaphor that he was proposing. For instance, he thought that the English parliament was like the brain. Uh, however, I don't think today that we would make that same kind of comparison. William Morton Wheeler, uh, who was a uh, early 20th century uh, biologist, he, he studied ants, he was a myrmecologist uh, at Harvard University, he likened ant societies to organisms and first used the term superorganism in 1928 in his book, The Social Insects. Wheeler's definition of an organism, which was important to his use of the term superorganism to explain insect societies, his definition was a complete, definitely coordinated, and therefore individualized system of activities, which are primarily directed to obtaining and assimilating substances from an environment to producing other similar substances known as offspring and to protecting the system itself and usually also its offspring from disturbances emanating from the environment. The three fundamental activities enumerated in this definition, namely nutrition, reproduction, and protection. So he looked at social insect societies or insect societies, and he saw them having these characteristics of his definition of an individual organism. He continues, the most general organismal character of the ant colony is its individuality. It behaves as a unitary whole, maintaining its identity in space, resisting dissolution, and as a general rule, any fission with other colonies of the same or alien species. This resistance is manifested in the fierce defense and offensive cooperation of the colonial personnel. So like an organism, the component parts of a, an insect society, for instance, all the workers, they are in some definable space with borders and boundaries. They have an integrity that they protect. For William Morton Wheeler, the characteristic of social insects that made them superorganisms was their individuality, their organizational structure for maintaining themselves, and the fact that they occupy a specific space, that they can have an identity in space. This identity is, in this case of a swarm, a, repro a reproductive element, is furnished by the queen who's in the center of this, and she's putting out signals that the other bees uh, organize themselves around and form this swarm. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to dissociate this superorganism into its component parts and then show how it reassembles itself. So in this illustration, I shook all the bees that were clustered on this screen. They're clustered around the queen. You can see the queen with the, uh, the small box that was suspended with the screen. I shook all the bees off. They're flying around in the air and they're casting about looking for or trying uh, orienting to the odors of the queen. She produces chemical pheromones that attract the bees back to her. So the first few bees will arrive uh, on the cage that she's on in and they will start 
scent fanning. They produce a pheromone themselves, which is an orientation pheromone, which gets the other bees that are flying in the air to fly towards that signal that they're sending that notes the queen. Now, right here, you can see that you saw that little cage that was on, on the screen. That's where the queen is. But now the bees are starting to find her and orient to her. They release their their orientation pheromones. The other bees that are flying around uh, locate that scent. They come in and then they start uh, producing the scent themselves. So now I'm just going to carry it over and I'm going to put it back on the, the, the hook and hang it on the tree. And then we'll check back in a few minutes and see what's happening with respect to the swarm. This is 15 minutes later. And you can see that it's growing. It's re establishing itself as a, an organ, organism-like structure with defined boundaries and co cohesiveness, uh, as William Morton Wheeler said, was an essential component. For William Morton Wheeler, insect colonies are true organisms, not, not just metaphors, uh, but actually true organisms, and they're organized for nutrition, reproduction, and protection. These were defining elements in his, in his view of a, a insect society making it a super organism. This is a honeybee nest. Uh, the nest of the honeybee, if you look at it, has an organizational structure that also supports uh, organization for uh, defense, nutrition, and reproduction. In this case, when you look at it, you can see parallel wax combs. These combs are separated by a small space, and they're vertically oriented. And on the different combs, you find um, pollen, honey, and brood being produced, representing nutrition and reproduction. Um, if you were to take this and pull it apart, I mean, this, usually they're inside of a structure of some kind. That one happened to be on the ledge outside my office window. But usually they're inside a structure. If you go in and you pull a comb out, say this one here located somewhere near the center of, the, of that, um, those combs that are in that cavity, it would look something like what's shown here on the right. It would have organizational structure for the honey that's, that they produce. It's going to be on the outsides and and on the sides of the edges and towards the bottom. Then you have the pollen, that's the protein source, and it's close to the brood, which are here, which are the young larvae and pupae and eggs that the bees are caring for. 